Hello, this is Anditi. Welcome to the news with NDTV. It's Friday, October 18th. And coming up in today's episode, Enforcement Directorate raids Muda office in the alleged land scam and money laundering case against Karnataka Chief Minister Siddharamaiah. Relief for Sadhguru, setback for Gurmeet Ram Rahim in Supreme Court. Death threat against Salman Khan and ransom demand by Bishnoi Gang. And USC charges ex-Indian intelligence officer in alleged murder plot of Khalistani leader. First up, the Enforcement Directorate raided Mysuru Urban Development Authority or MUDA city office today in the alleged land allotment scam, which many refer to as the MUDA scam. The 12-member ED team was a part of the larger investigation in connection with the money laundering case against Karnataka Chief Minister Siddharamaiah. The Congress leader and his family faced state and federal charges over allegations that they profited from an exchange of land allotments overseen by MUDA. It is alleged the Chief Minister's wife, B.N. Parvati, was given 14 plots of land in an upscale area of Mysuru in exchange for 3.16 acres elsewhere, reportedly for infrastructural projects. Anti-corruption activists claim the exchange cost the state 45 crore rupees. The Chief Minister's wife has handed back the 14 plots but Muda officials said it would not alter or halt the investigation against her, her husband and her brother. The initial land that was exchanged was allegedly a gift by her brother to her. Today, ED officials met Muda Commissioner Raghunandan and other officials, including those from the Special Land Acquisition Office. The agency is also likely to seize certain documents related to the whole issue. As sources have told NDTV, the agency will investigate all officials involved in the alleged scam. ED officials were escorted by Central Paramilitary Force today. They conducted searches at other locations across Mysuru, although none of them are directly linked to Chief Minister or his family. Notably, K. Mari Gauda recently resigned as Muda Chief, and Mr. Gauda said that he had been instructed to do so by the Chief Minister, not due to political pressure, but out of health concerns. Mr. Gauda is a long-time associate of Siddharamaya, having worked for him for over 40 years. The raids and investigation have also faced many failed objections by the state government. Permission to prosecute Siddharamaya was given by Karnataka Governor Thavar Chand Gehlot, which the Chief Minister opposed in Karnataka High Court. But the Chief Minister lost his challenge and soon a trial court formed the charges against him and has charged Siddharamaya for destruction of evidence as well. The issue highlighted the opposition Bharatiya Janta Party to demand the Chief Minister's resignation, but the Chief Minister maintains he is innocent. While Supreme Court granted big relief to spiritual leader Sadhguru, cancelling proceedings against his Isha Foundation, rape convict and self-styled Godman, Gurmeet Ram Rahim faced a setback from the top court. First, the Dera Sacha Sauda chief Ram Rahim, who is out on parole, will be investigated in the 2015 Bargari sacrilege cases. Earlier, the Punjab and Haryana High Court had stayed proceedings against him in three sacrilegious cases involving the desecration of the Guru Granth Sahib a holy scripture of the Sikhs. A Supreme Court bench of Justices B.R. Gavai and K.V. Vishwanathan also issued a notice to Ram Rahim inquiring his response within four weeks. Ram Rahim is already serving a 20-year-long sentence for rape and is also convicted for murder. But his frequent paroles have drawn the ire of the opposition, especially the latest one, just before the Haryana Assembly elections, which was won by the Bharatiya Janta Party. And the sacrilege case, in which Ram Rahim was safe so far, as High Court had state proceedings, took place in the Bargari area of Punjab's Farid Court district, and it involved the disappearance and alleged desecration of the revered Guru Granth Sahib in 2015 and triggered outrage among the Sikh community. Moving on to Sadhguru and Isha Foundation, the Supreme Court cancelled all proceedings against the Isha Foundation over a father's claims that his two daughters had been, quote, brainwashed into joining spiritual leader Sadhguru's ashram in Tamil Nadu's Coimbatore and denied their family contact with them. However, a bench led by Chief Justice of India D.Y. Chandrachur dismissed the petition which claimed unlawful detention of the two women named Geeta and Lata as they are both adults and living in the ashram of their own will. The order, however, is only for this case, the court said, after acknowledging earlier that the doctor at the ashram was recently charged with child abuse. Earlier in a counter-petition filed in the same case, Tamil Nadu police said 
Many others who had entered the foundation had been reported missing. The petition also gave details of a POCSO or Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act case against a doctor employed by Isha Outreach Program. There was also mention of sexual assault complaint filed by a Delhi woman. The alleged incident happened when she was attending a yoga course in the ashram in 2021. On the so-called brainwashed matter, the court observed that Madras High Court, which ordered an inquiry into the habeas corpus petition, after which police raided the ashram, acted in a completely inappropriate manner. The Supreme Court noted that since neither of the daughters was a minor, they were 27 and 24 when they joined the ashram, and that the purpose of a habeas corpus petition was fulfilled by their appearing in the High Court, no further directions were needed from the judicial forum. Proceedings such as this could not be used to, quote, malign people and institutions, unquote. The Chief Justice said in oral remarks on the case according to legal news website Live Law. Earlier this month, the Supreme Court transferred to itself the case, then heard by the Madras High Court, and halted in order directing the police to investigate the father's allegations. And next, in the latest alleged cornering of Salman Khan by the infamous Lawrence Bishnoi Gang, a ransom of Rs 5 crore has been demanded by the latter. A death threat allegedly by the members of Lawrence Bishnoi Gang was sent to Mumbai Traffic Police through a WhatsApp message. The note while threatening Khan's life also claims that the enmity will end if a sum of Rs 5 crore is paid to them. Failure to do so would result in the actor having a worse fate than politician Baba Siddiq who was recently assassinated by the same gang. The threat message reads, quote, Don't take this lightly if Salman Khan wants to stay alive and end the enmity with Lawrence Bishnoi. He must pay Rs 5 crore. If the money is not given, his condition will be worse than that of Baba Siddiqui. Unquote. The gang has targeted Salman Khan for years now for his alleged involvement in the 1998 Black Buck poaching case. The black buck animal is revered by the Bishnoi community in Rajasthan and on the surface, it seems like the gang seeks revenge against Khan for his alleged crime against the animal. The gang is keen on its target, seemingly. The Navi Mumbai police arrested a key member of the Lawrence Bishnoi gang, the accused who is identified as Sukha, alias Sukhbir Balbir Singh, was apprehended in Haryana's Panipat and has been linked to an alleged plot to assassinate Mr. Khan. Singh had reportedly given a contract to other gang members to carry out the attack on the actor. According to police sources, Singh had been in direct contact with his handler, who is called Dogar and is a Pakistan-based figure. The gang had allegedly intended to use high-powered firearms, including AK-47s, M-16s and AK-92s, smuggled from Pakistan to execute the plot. Singh's arrest is the latest in a series of breakthroughs in a broader investigation into the Bishnoi gang's conspiracy against Khan. Earlier this year, the Nami Mumbai police registered an FIR against 18 individuals from the gang for plotting to kill the actor. The FIR followed the shocking shooting incident outside of Mr. Khan's Bandra resident by members of the same gang. Breaking from breaking news, Soaring tomato prices are not only a concern for households, but also some police personnel in UP. After a truck carrying 18 tons of tomato overturned on a highway near UP's Kanpur, the scenes soon turned chaotic, with tomatoes getting spilled all around the accident site. Local police rushed to secure the area soon after the incident, before the scattered tomatoes could trigger a looting spree. They feared people from a nearby village could rush to the spot to steal the tomatoes which are currently being sold at Rs 100 a kg and as a result, a team of police people kept vigil all night long. The overnight patrolling of the at-risk vegetable highlighted the concern of inflated food prices, especially on social media where the uniformed police officers guarding tomatoes quickly went viral. Now, back to news. Amid high tensions between India and Canada over the alleged plot to kill Khalistani terrorist Gurpatwant Singh Pannum, USA has implicated a person of Indian origin and alleged he is involved with the government of India, claims refuted by the centre. The United States has charged a former Indian intelligence officer Vikas Yadav for allegedly orchestrating a failed plot to kill Pannum who was residing in New York City. Mr. Yadav, who was previously associated with the Research and Analysis Wing, 
popularly known as Raw, is accused of coordinating an assassination attempt on Pannum, a dual US and Canadian citizen. The US Justice Department has charged him with a murder for hire and money laundering plot. FBI Director Christopher Ray said in a statement, and I quote, The FBI will not tolerate acts of violence or other efforts to retaliate against those residing in the US for exercising their constitutionally protected rights. Unquote. The plot allegedly began in May of 2023 with Mr. Yadav, then reportedly an employee of the Indian government, allegedly collaborating with individuals in India and overseas to execute the assassination. Gurpat Van Singh Pannum, the intended target, is a designated terrorist in India and an advocate for Khalistan, a proposed independent Sikh homeland, to be carved out of India. According to Reuters, Mr. Yadav, who is 39 of age, remains in India, but American officials are expected to pursue his extradition to face charges in the US. Mr. Yadav is accused of recruiting an Indian national, Nikhil Gupta, to execute the assassination. Mr. Gupta was arrested in Prague last June after travelling from India and subsequently extradited to the US. He pleaded not guilty to the charges there. The indictment also describes how Mr. Yadav hired Mr. Gupta to orchestrate the assassination of the victim in United States. US authorities argue that Mr. Gupta felt there was an urgency in killing Pannam, particularly after the murder of another Khalistani terrorist, Hardeep Singh Nijjar, in Canada in 2023. According to the indictment, Mr. Gupta believed that after Nijjar's killing, there was now no need to wait for Pannam's assassination. According to the indictment, Mr. Yadav and Mr. Gupta allegedly contracted an individual to carry out the killing for around $100,000. The FBI later discovered that the hired assassin was in fact an FBI informant working undercover. In June of 2023, just days before Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to the US, the informant received $15,000 advance from the murder for the murder of Mr. Yadav and Mr. Gupta. The transaction reportedly took place in a car near New York and a photograph of the exchange has been included in the indictment. The indictment also includes a photograph of Mr. Yadav in military attire the prosecutors allege that Mr. Yadav instructed Mr. Gupta and the hired assassin to delay the killing after Prime Minister Modi's visit to avoid diplomatic fallout during the high-profile event. Coming back to the accusations, the Ministry of External Affairs yesterday confirmed that the individual named in the US Justice Department's indictment is no longer associated with the Indian government. MEA spokesperson Randeep Jaiswal said, and I quote, the U.S. State Department informed us that the individual in the Justice Department indictment is no longer employed by India. I confirm that he is no longer an employee of the government of India, unquote. U.S. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller yesterday confirmed that the Indian delegation had met an interagency team from the FBI Department of Justice and the State Department. They said they were satisfied by the cooperation. That's all for today. You were listening to the news with NDTV, your daily newspaper and TV bulletin wrapped in a compact podcast. If you want to catch up with the day's events in a hurry, do remember to subscribe to the news with NDTV on Apple, Spotify and the NDTV News app. This is your host Anviti, signing off.